the site plan and clearing of this points. The only, um, and, but the major point com came out that we had a lot of things to discuss, but we're not, we want to get the feel, we want to get along with the waivers. So that's the reason we decided at the last meeting, the, the point was that the, at the next meeting, we need to handle the waivers. If the waivers looks like acceptable, we will go ahead and address all the comments. There's a lot of open um, um, landscape comments and about the parking, about parking banking, which parkings should be banked. We have a lot of comments to address. Only thing is basically the, I think it was Rick Golden was at the, at the last meeting handling this meeting. He pointed out that we need to settle first and he should, uh, my, our attorney shall prove the substantial burden for religious exercise on this application. And then this can move forward with the details. But I'm ready to answer any detailed question. Provided my advice to the board in a memorandum, um, attorney client advice. If you have any questions, we can step out and talk about it. But you've been dealing with a lot of mikva and shul requests lately. So I think you're very familiar with the substantial burden waiver that is being requested here. It has been requested in in several others, um, and you're familiar with with evaluating that and. Um, Different, different ways of considering it and, and how the substantial burden is established. So if you have any further questions, we, we can talk about it outside. But I think you're pretty good on that. No, like you said, I'm pretty familiar with what's going on. I do think um, one point of clarification needs to be made because there, from what was in the application, it, there were 30 congregants, but from what I heard tonight, there were 30 men, 60 kids, and 12 women. Is that wrong? I will, I will address that, yeah. I was okay. actually uh, from the beginning on the application, so we, um, I, I'm not sure what is on the plan. You're talking on the site plan? The, the narrative. Right the, the, the narrative, um, okay. There's a congregants defined as, as a, the male, the, the, the husband, the okay? The head of the family, okay? So you have 30 quote unquote congregants, male congregants, okay? That's 30 seats. Then there's 30 seats to accommodate 30 children, male children. Um, and, and it's custom in the Orthodox uh, Jewish religion to bring in one of your children to, uh, you know, to services on Saturday. Um, no, four and over, four and over, okay? And then, so that's 60. And then there's 12 spaces reserved for women. So that's a totally, a total of 72, I believe. Yes. And no female children. No, 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 no. The children are not coming. They're just not being used. Actually, the women are also not coming. They're also not coming during the week. It's just Saturdays and high holidays the women are attending and just on a very small turnout. Not, they're not required to go, just. Yeah, it doesn't mean there's gonna be 60 people there every Saturday. But yeah, I just, I didn't understand that. <coughs> so I want okay. to get some clarification from the board as well. Thank you. Uh, no, there's, the uh, question I know that's before you for um, uh, a waiver is for the lot area, okay? There are other things on here that are not in conformance with our zone plan, but they may be able to comply. Screening, walls, other things like that. I don't know that they've made a full effort to do that. We've identified a number of those. Gary now has something in his mem memo regarding this. So, um, I mean, I think they should try to comply with that, and if they cannot, then they should describe the extent to which they cannot so you can make a determination on whether there's a waiver available and Kelly should weigh in as to whether that is something they grant a waiver or whether that requires ZBA action. I'm not sure. Uh, just, just for the record, I believe we will comply with uh, screening and all the other requirements. Right? Okay. Uh, 
uh, as discussed at the last meeting with John Queen. Um, uh, I would suggest you reserve have, judgment until you review your plan. Yes. Sometimes site constraints, uh, you, even with good intentions, you may not be able to. Yeah. So I think you should take a look at that and then determine whether you can or cannot yeah. and then present it to the board. Correct. We'll have our engineer look at it. So. No. <laughs> well, I mean, basically, when we say full time, it, it's operating seven days a week from Saturday until um, Friday. I mean, su sorry, Sunday until Friday. It's basically daily prayer services, morning and evening. Saturday is Shabbos, um, and that's where you have your Shabbos services, and then obviously you have your religious holidays, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and, and uh, several others. Um, so that's why we refer to it as a daily operating uh, synagogue. It's not like it's open like nine to five. No. Uh, uh, it's basically there are some synagogues, and we had an application prior to that that was only serving for Saturdays only. And this is up, this application is basically for daily, the same as 24 cat school. The other one was. Again, parking is gonna be critical during the week, uh, especially if you reach the maximum number of attendees Correct. in each service. We believe that some of the congregants, even during the week, will walk to the shul because it's in close proximity. But we believe we actually we propose par uh, um, the number of parkings to comply with the parking requirements for the zoning. This is basically so. This actually has contradicted a lot coverage problems. So this has forced to get the waiver for the lot coverage in order to comply with the parking. Um. I had asked, I think, the last time you were before us, according to this Google map, there was another shul 0.6 um, miles away at 364 Ridge Road. I have uh, checked out this. There is no shul on this location, as per my knowledge. I wasn't able to knock on the door, but there's no visible. I asked a couple people who are knowing the area. There's no shul in this area. I don't know why it's listed on Google. The other one is on, at this, uh, I think, on Hirsch Road. That's mm -hmm. a bungalow colony, and they have a shul for summer use only, and it's like internally, so it's not open to the public. Okay. Questions? All right, I remember the plan now. <coughs> so the last time you were here, I think we were talking about land banking, particular spots. Correct. Right? I we, remember. Yeah. 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 We had propose some type of plan, not submitted yet. The reason was that um, mm -hmm. we, as discussed at the last meeting, want to get the waivers in place mm -hmm. and we'll deal with all. Actually, we will, I think we were in agreement to accommodate all the board's requests at that time and we will have everything updated at the next uh, meeting. So it's, it's a two waiver, just a lot area and it's the, the coverage we're going from. Correct. Uh, they have 0.94 acres required as an acre. That's pre-existing. There's really nothing we can do to. Right. We can't grow. We can't grow earth. Nope. Um, so, to me, I mean, I don't know how the rest of the board feels that that's that's a you know a really a gimme because there's nothing we can do about that. We're not going to make the earth bigger over there. Um, the coverage, though, I mean, going from 10 percent to 35 percent. Well, that's where the land. I think the landscaping helps. That one. Right. We will. Uh, it's a corner property. It's. So, I don't know how much of that coverage is because of the required parking. That is, do we know? I'd have to. I don't know specifically. I'd have to check. Okay. Um, I would say it's every, it's the, the parking and additional the, the walkway as per the board's request to do a walkway on the other side of the of the building and that's where that's where it if, gets if you took away the parking right. and just made it the, a driveway come into the house you'd probably be compliant so there's a considerable mm -hmm. 
that's yeah. the problem. Now, also, it's an undersized lot, so you're going to get the coverage higher from that aspect. So how do we bring that up? That's yeah. I, don't, I think the parking and the, and the coverage are one thing. It's the rendering that's something else altogether. But that would be under ARP. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll do if, if this design, okay, I need to say this so that you understand me. If this design equates to this much lot coverage and we are not in agreement with this design, then the lot coverage will be changed. Correct? Um, the extension of the footprint of the building where we are talking, it's not on the plan now, it was a miscommunication between the plan and this one, is actually um, on, uh, one was on a covered porch. We'll hand over to him if he can explain the, where the additions are. So wait, we don't have what you're describing right now? Yeah, but uh, I want to add something to, to explain on that. Okay. But, I, but I think the... If we approve a 35% no, what, what lot we, covers, they can't make it any bigger. Jesus. Is that what we're saying? I don't know what we're saying. It's just <laughs> no, what I'm, I'm saying is, is our requirement for the parking spaces and the ramps in that is what has yes. pushed us into Correct. the lot coverage. I believe it has. Well, that's no. the other question is how much okay, bigger that's Okay, that's what I want to point out. There's nothing, no lot coverage is being added because making the building bigger. It's just enclosing a covered porch, what is actually part of uh, the covered lot already. So the only thing adding to the lot coverage is the, is the basically the new parking and walkways and ramps associated with the handicapped and the parking requirements. Okay, let me just ask you a question. What's there now? Um, the house that's there now. Pictures of it. This house. Right. That's the house. Correct? Yes. Yes. To turn that into this, you're telling me what are you doing? Are you knocking this down? I will hand over to the designer. Okay. Are you are you tearing this building down? Not no. at all. So how is that turning into this? Let me uh, I have a couple. But this is not the ARB. I know, but what okay. I'm saying is this to me looks substantially different and bigger than what is there right now. Yes. So if there, I agree. this is Again. bigger, it's covering more, more land. Lot. Mm -hmm. Again, I want to point out I cannot build a building bigger as approved on the site plan. And the site plan is showing the existing footprint. This is basically covering the existing facade with additional um, like stucco and some foam detailing around it and some so stone detailing. It's nothing that is going to tear down the structure. Let's say some dormers building out. It's something we can discuss, like you said, at the ARB. But this is clearly nothing to add to the size of the building besides enclosing the the the, the front porch, okay, where it's actually you can see on the existing picture. Me, yes. I don't know if I do not speak uh, for anybody else. The, you orient me to one to the other. I'll do that. The reason why it's it's very um, um, different is because this is a, a picture of the right hand side of the building, and this is the left hand. So we are technically, with this picture, mm -hmm. we are facing the opposite side of the building from the corner of property. So that's the other side? That's the other side. So, But just to, to explain you how this design is built on top of this, is we took this double A in the front, and that's this double A. I just raised the facade. Mm -hmm. So if needed, we could just lower it. But this is, I didn't touch the structure of the, of the roof even. It, it is the, the existing double A that you see over here, and I just dressed it up a little bit from the outside, but without add, adding anything to the building. The only thing you could see is that there is a, a um, porch, a covered porch right in there, and I filled it up. So that's the only part that it's flattened out. Now this this part, which is going to be the front of the of the shawl, mm -hmm. which is now the opposite of this side. It's the other side of the building. I did the same thing. I took the A. On the other side, it's a single A, not a double A. And I just increased that. So the only thing what I, what I physically added 
is some attic space just to give a dimension to the building. But physically, we didn't add anything to the building. I only raised the part of the roof in this area. Okay, but none of, none of that has anything to do with... Bigger. No. no. I'm sorry. None of that has anything to do with how the congregants practice their voice, correct? Oh, no, it's a, it's a design only. Correct. Uh, no, I understand your concern. We will probably update that and we'll deal with that at the Airbnb on that. And I think you have the right to act on that. Correct. You still need the waivers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're not waiving the Airbnb requirements. That's what you want to clarify. Yeah. I understand. Can, can I ask one question? Um, the area on the map that's proposed for banked parking, is that included in your impervious surface calculation? Because it should be. Yes. It is? Yeah, okay. It is. Talking if we're taking away the upper. Uh, I'm sorry, that includes the island. So it's 162, yeah. 162 square feet per space times 7, 1134 square feet. The, uh, the board has to consider them as if they were built, so that was yeah. why I asked that question. We're in the same spot we normally are, but I believe that the parking is the max for the area. Otherwise, we add more impervious surface. So if those parking spaces are adequate, then that's where, that's where it ends up. But the, the next phase is really how we protect the neighborhood with the screening. With the screening area, so it doesn't look like it's the parking lot. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's basically it would either or, or the waivers for the lot coverage or for the parking. And I think yeah, the gain for the parking. The parking requirement, so they don't have so, Yeah, oh, but parking. you can't do that. Well, I'm just saying there's, there's two ways to go. There's, okay, there's that's the opposite way. Parking, and then we would, they would ask us to waive the requirement of the parking spot. Mm -hmm. So in this case, they put in all the required parking, and that's now that they need the waiver for the lot coverage. Right. Because of the required parking. Yes. Otherwise, they'll be parking on the street. Yes. Right. Which is. Which I don't want to see as a curve. And that's the, yeah, that, let's see. The door, everything is on the site plan regarding the ADA. I think there is some revisions on that too coming on the next plan, but uh, it's accommodated. So. The board did request additional traffic information at your last meeting. I don't know if you saw the uh, memo that came in from Mazer. Um, there was a picture at the bottom where he wanted the land banked parking shifted. So I don't know if that might, if 
you want to talk about that, that might address some of your concerns, at least for part of it. He's going to put it in the back where they show the land bank parking now, move the real parking back to there, and remove some of the more visible from the street. Right. I'm just highlighting that again, that's all. And Kelly, they don't get the really serious. Is that a third path? The ZBA is that a third path? It's four dozen graders. Okay. Because I felt somebody thinking that we should have been on the own path previously. Um, <clears throat> so let's explore that for a moment. What does that mean? That we, we can't come to a, a, a resolution here? Sure, sure. I'm trying to speak all quietly. <laughs> there you go. Amen. Second. Hi. I'm sorry. Wait, 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 wait. I couldn't hear any of, of that. So. Oh, okay, good. Phew.
Good chat. All right. Um, so based on uh, consultation with our attorneys, a couple of things here. One is SICA hasn't been completed yet. And we're not in a process to complete SICA tonight uh, because we need our traffic consultant to review the traffic information that was submitted to us last time by you. So at the next meeting that you're on the agenda, we will have our traffic consultant here to review that so we can move SICA forward. Um, also, <clears throat> based on the general comments to the board and the feeling the board, I've heard the board put forward, um, we, based on the design that you have submitted and the site plan and uh, the drawing, we're not ready, we're not comfortable that the substantial burden has been met. Um, on the next to middle, we want to see the current, current, the current building over the new design and whatever the design may be. I know you've heard some feedback on this design that this isn't exactly favorable. Um, so come back to us with, you know, what design we feel best, it's best fit the community, the character of a residential neighborhood. Um, with that, we would like to see a breakdown of the lot coverage based on the building and a lot coverage based on the imperative service uh, by the required part. And I think after we get all that information, I think this board would probably be in a better spot to give you the determination on the substantial burden. Um, I think we were a, will be able to provide that. Okay. So it's basically probably we'll need to wait. It's not the next meeting. It's one meeting after that. It's probably the, the not February nineteenth. February nineteenth. Yes. Yeah. Right. Meeting. I think so. It's the fifth and then the nineteenth. I think so. It probably most likely be the second meeting in February. Okay. So basically, there is the question is if we need to invest in. The, detailing the plan, the other list of comments, or that's basically we want to consider before going moving forward with the waiver. The list of comments we will address, but the... Right, yeah, we, we know we have the landscape and all that we yes. have to go off, but let's let's focus on the next submission. And let's I think... I old think versus new, and let's see what that looks like, and then the, and the an overlay, if you could do yeah. that, and, and then a percentage of lot coverage breakdown ver from the building, you know, with the new design, whatever the design may be, and with the uh, parking. And then this way will be the better the better spot to move forward. Okay. The other thing I think we will clarify and make sure that we can accommodate the landscape requirements or yeah, not. Yeah. And basically. you have the, I, if you don't need it, I'm sure Dennis can get you a copy of the memo with yes. the, the required buffering. Yes. And then um, I think we this board also talked about in our traffic is moving those spaces in the front. Okay. Kind of swapping your, your, your land bank from this, the front to the back. So right. This, this can be addressed after that because this basically, basically doesn't have with a lot of coverage. So yep. we will comply whatever the board's okay. request. Show them how the policy affects the It's the original footprint too. Yeah, it's fine. I understand. Yeah, I think we'll we're, we're good. We're good? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good have night. night. Have a good 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 night.